And so, hello everyone and welcome to the latest Booning Podcast. It's myself, Pastor Jesse here. And today I have a special guest with me, uh, all the way from South Africa. Yes, South Africa, would you believe that? I'd love to go there one day and I'm sure it will happen. But today um, I met this wonderful young woman of God when um, I had the privilege of speaking on uh, For the Nations uh, a couple of years ago. And her testimony, literally, it was twofold in that it broke my heart, but it also gave me so much encouragement. And I felt the love of God even as it came out. So even today, I would like to welcome Chrisan Chetty from South Africa. Chrisan, welcome. Hi, Pastor Jesse. Thank you so much for having me to join you today. It's such a blessing. I'm so excited to see what God has in store for us today. Yeah, yeah, trust me, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. So, Chrisan, before we, we get into the nitty-gritty of what we're going to talk in today, could you just give me um, a little backstory on yourself and, um, and firstly, your, you know, your background and then your walk with Christ? Where did it begin? How did it begin? Sure. So, my walk with Christ actually began, I think, when I was about nine or 10 years old, because at that moment, I remember being in a church service um, and just, I felt God like, you know, touch my heart. And from that moment, I knew that um, I'm surrendering my heart to Christ. And, you know, God has been so faithful over the years just to take me from being a little child to being a youth and then to being a young adult right now. And, um, you know, he, he placed in my heart such a desire for music and uh, such a desire for worship. And uh, it all began when uh, I remember, I think it was my ninth or 10th birthday after then giving my heart to Christ. Uh, I felt this desire within me and I was like uh, telling my mom and my dad, I really want to learn how to play the piano. I really uh, wanted to be able to play the piano. At that time, uh, my worship leader used to play the piano. And I was like, I really want to play the piano just like that. And my my mom and dad, for my 10th birthday, surprised me with a piano. And from that moment, you know, God has been using me in music. And in, in I have the privilege to serve in our local church in the praise and worship team. So I, I have the privilege of playing the piano and you know over the years I played the guitar and then learning to sing and to do all of those things Um, music has been such an important part of my life I think you know in your worst days when you have uh, nothing left all you have is your piano and you have your worship in the presence of God and that's something that really has helped me through and uh, worship has become something that is so important to me you know, the Bible says that um, uh, we do not work, that God seeks worshipers that worship in spirit and in truth, which is so important because worship is so much more than just, uh, you know, a song that we sing. It's our, also our lifestyle, you know, our surrender before God. And so that's my story being a young uh, Christian in South Africa. Uh, later on in my years of being a young Christian, I've had the absolute privilege of meeting such amazing people, uh, young people, and that are so on fire for God. You know, South Africa is such a, such a beautiful place. Uh, we have so many different races and so many different cultures of people. And our young people are so on fire for God. And they are so, um, you know, passionate for what God is doing. And it's amazing to see that God is doing such great things, you know, in our country. So it's been such a blessing to be able to be a part of such uh, great things, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's truly inspiring. It's all inspiring. And I think that's where there's a kind of kindred um, spirit with Trinidad in South Africa, on Trans Tobago, in that um, it's so diverse, my own country we are so diverse we have every creed race you know it's um it's it's very um it's very 
diverse in that you know um even all believers as well it's not like christianity it, it and, and that's the amazing thing about god is that christianity is not fixed a specific race not fixed a specific people but uh, and, and even myself and, and and my walk with christ and, and and traveling throughout my my country and seeing how diverse it is and but i love how you touched on worship there and how god has used you through worship because I myself have a uh, we have a segment um, on our channel called Worship Leaders Corner where I love to interview worshipers because I myself, even though I have not been yet, and I'm still asking God for the gift yet to sing and to play musical instruments. Worship is an integral part of my life. It really is, um, and 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 I always I always kind of um drive that into the young people that I speak to that the importance of worship and and as you said, worship is a lifestyle, and uh, and then. Talk to me then how, give me a little tidbit on how worship has brought you through instances where you would have been, it's been a valley instead of a hill experience, you know, where you've had to go through some tough times and, and how worship, and because here's the thing about it, like prophets with worshipers, God speaks through the writing, God speaks through the songs that he, he's giving to these worshipers because it's basically... We need to understand worship is it's literally God speaking to himself. It's us getting it and we're giving him, giving it back to him. That's what worship is. And so just like it is with prophets and God speaking to prophets, how has worship helped you and guided you, um, you know, through your years? Worship is such a profound uh, thing where, you know, God, he, he he wants to meet with us and how so than in that place of worship you know i always think that worship you know the bible says in psalms 91 um i think it's verse one that whoever dwells in the shelter of the almighty shall rest in the shadow of the almighty you know uh you know in that place of oh, being in his shadow being covered by him you are safe and worship does that. It, it gives you that, you know, his presence that surrounds you and helps you to find safety, helps you to find uh, peace uh, where you can fellowship with God one in one. And how has that helped me in my years of being a Christian? Yes, you know, being a Christian is, is a hard journey. And we have to face a lot of different challenges and uh, different testings that we go through. But we can be assured that, you know, if we come to Christ and we surrender to him, he's always there. He's our refuge, you know, he's our strength, he's our portion. And, you know, that in itself is worship. When we go to God, we say, God, I look to you, you know, uh, you are my refuge. You are my strength. That is worship. In a way, it gives us such peace, you know. It gives us such peace in, in the trials and in the testing, in the tribulations, whatever may come our way. We are able to stand only because God is with us in that moment where we worship him. You know, um, I want to share a little bit about my testimony of losing my dad. Uh, and I think it was during COVID. Uh, I think 2020 was the year that we, well, South Africa, COVID had come into South Africa, if I'm not mistaken. But in that year, in that December, I lost my dad to COVID. And for my family, that had been one of the most heartbreaking things that we had to ever face because as a family, we were always together and we always did things together. And then to have my dad just taken away from us was so heartbreaking. But, you know, what helped us through, and I will say, is our prayers and our worship. Because my mom and I, I you know, my mom has been someone that's been so strong. But God knows how she brought us together, my brother and I. Um, you know, being in covid uh, when you had COVID, nobody could come visit you. Nobody could come and see you, you know. Everything was in isolation. So losing my dad in that time was really uh, a lonely time for us because nobody could come and comfort us 
we only had God and we had the Holy Spirit. And uh, in that moment, that week of before the funeral, uh, my mom got us together, my family and I, and she said, we are going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to worship God. So we, we didn't have the strength to pray. <laughs> in those moments, you never have any strength to do anything. But my mom said, you know, um, you, we're going to pray. And we prayed. We prayed mornings and evenings. We worship God. We well, we prayed to God. And, you know, that really helped me through that prayer. Prayer in that week whilst waiting for the funeral. Even after that, just praying helped us through as a family. It's, it's you know, they say that time heals all wounds. Uh, especially when you lose a, lo a loved one. They always say time heals. But the truth is time does not heal. Jesus heals. Jesus is the only one that heals. Because you know what? It's I think it will be like three years this year, December, for my dad's passing. And we still remember my dad every single day. But I had to come to a place where I knew that within my heart, I was still hurting for the loss of my dad. And anyone that has lost somebody or has been through abandonment or whatever the situation may be, if you are in that place, you have to come before God and surrender to him and say, God, you know what, Jesus, heal my heart. And he is the only one that can heal that heart. You know, he is the only one that can touch you in a way that nobody else can heal and, and, and fill that space, you know, of losing someone. He's the only one that can restore you, restore your spirit. And I'm so grateful for my mom who really helped us pull us through in prayer, who really helped us to, you know, stand in faith because it's so easy you know in that time when you're going through something to question why is this happening you know um, why am I going through this and so easy to lose faith you know but because of my mom's prayer and and bringing us to a place of prayer we were able to stand and we are we are able to just keep going and keep uh, serving God and being able to you know, be in God's presence continuously because of that. And um, I, I wanted to share something uh, in, in the book of Acts. So uh, we all know the story about Paul and Silas. And um, here Paul and Silas was put into prison. And we know the story. And the Bible says about midnight, Paul and Silas began to, they were praying. And they were singing hymns to God, you know, that scripture. Uh, but, you know, whenever I thought about that scripture, I always think about Paul and Silas walking up and down, you know, like how when we in our prayer closet, we're walking, we, we've got that walk going. <laughs> we keep walking up and down and worshiping God in that way. But yes, that's what I always thought Paul and Silas were doing in that moment. But when I really read that verse, those verses before, I realized something, and it says uh, in my Bible that there was a crowd that attacked Paul and Silas. You know, they they flogged them, they they severely flogged them, and they threw them into prison. And not just anywhere, this it says they threw them in the inner cell, and they fastened their feet. And later on, when we read, it says that the jailers had to wipe their wounds. That's how badly flogged they were. So you, so now I want you to see this in a different um, scenario, in different view, and and see that Paul and Silas weren't walking up and down. They were beaten so badly that they were on the floor. They were in their lowest position that they, that anyone could be in, you know. And here they are at midnight, praying, and they're singing hymns to God. And it says that the other prisoners were listening to what they were doing, you know. And imagine you and I in that place where we are at our lowest place. Uh, we're in the very lowest position of our lives that we feel we are in. If we in that time prayed and we sang to God. And when we come to that place, there's something powerful that happens. And, and 
you know in those in those things that we do not understand god is working god is moving so that one day we can when we are sharing our testimonies to the world somebody else can be touched and moved you know uh, as as bible says that the prisoners were listening and and when the the foundations of the prison shook because of their prayers because of their prayers it says at once all prison doors were opened and every every chain came loose cuz see there is something powerful about us praising god in the middle of the worst thing that we could be going through something powerful is happening that's not going to just impact your life but somebody else's life as well so we should never ever underestimate the power of our testimonies and so i just wanted to encourage someone to be with that word uh, about paul and silas and 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 i want to encourage people to keep worshiping keep praising even when you don't understand it you know when my dad passed away we we couldn't understand it our physical minds didn't want to understand it and it felt like the worst thing we could possibly go through but i can testify today that god is faithful he will step in he will be your provider he will be your refuge your strength your portion that is the god that we serve he will be your comforter even if you have to cry cry but keep strong in faith keep praying keep praising god keep worshiping god because god is faithful and you will you will overcome the feelings that you are going through and we know that as christians when we lose our loved ones that being absent in the body means present with christ and that's the greatest i think to, uh, that's the greatest thing we all can look for and that's what helped us through that time knowing that my dad is in a better place and yeah so i hope that this could encourage you and someone else that's listening wow 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 that is beyond it it's beyond encouraging it's 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 something that needed to be said and needed to be get out there and 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 you guys who are watching i really really hope that this has touched you because it has touched me and i know it is the word of god that has come forth you know the bible says that weeping may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning but i just want to add on to that as well that uh, for the jews their day starts at 6 p.m. okay and so when you think of of paul and silas as, as she was reading their praying in the night their day that's their day their day had begun at that moment they've been tossed they've been thrown in and 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 even as you were reading that christianity because i myself i literally i went through that covid experience and and it was brought to a place where i could not move physically at all and it, it i was like on the back to that time where they were shackled they could not move but yet out of their mouth they were able to praise out of their mouth they were able to to worship and to pray and to testify and 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 those of you who are watching and listening now you have to understand that the holy spirit is your comforter in your lowest moment it might it might not be a physical ailment it might be something you're going through emotionally and 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 the lord is saying that the holy spirit is there as your comforter he will give you the words he will give you the utterances because it's a heart condition christian isn't it it's your heart yeah. condition that is it what separates us that's what separates the wheat from the tares and yes as christian said it's okay to weep right that weeping that weeping is for a season right but joy comes in the morning and we have to understand that and even as she's releasing this testimony as she's done before and she's doing again the bible says so and i, I love this scripture i love this scripture that uh where the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy and as she's releasing this into the atmosphere she's literally it's it's prophesying that testimony of of what jesus has done in her life Yes, she she endured that what she went through with her dad and it's so sad but we, as she said we on we all know this he's in a better place but the testimony of her life her mother's life her family's life where she was then and where she is now it's to release for everyone out there it's to prophesy into the airways to show that the enemy 
did not have the final say. But what the enemy meant for evil, as the Bible says, God turned it around for good. And we need to understand that, those of you who are listening, those of you who are watching, that look at Krishnan here right now, okay? Look at myself here right now. We've, we've all gone through a season, Krishnan, we've all gone through a season. And, and, and now we're entering a season of chapter four. It's a new page that we're entering because it's been a four-year period. And it is just, God is saying it's just you and me. That's what has been prophesied in, in, in my house, in my church in Trinidad, that it's just you and me, meaning that it's just us and God. And, and, and we have to get to that place of intimacy. In this season, God is saying that we have to be intimate with Him because the deception is real. Yes, we see that, you know, there are mighty um, men of God and women of God, and we've seen people saved and on fire. But listen, God wants intimacy. He wants intimacy. He wants dedication. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. And, and, and Chris, and just to tag along to your testimony there, your mother was obedient. She was obedient to, from hearing the word of the Lord where that you guys needed to pray because that is what, uh, that was what this was the saving grace that kept you guys through that period. And those of you who are watching now, the, the power of prayer, there's nothing like the power of prayer, right? I, I myself, I, I understand it. And the testimony of my life is, it's pray first and seek everything after. Seek the Lord first and everything will be added after, right? And that is so important. So as we talk about the youths, Chrisan, right? Just tell me what is what is the mood like in south africa what is it like to be a young believer in south africa you know because many of you watching they, they mightn't know they mightn't see they might not have heard anything i know recently um bethel was in south africa um i saw that and you know i saw i saw thousands of people there and it was amazing and awesome and everything and our mutual friend bianca um I, I i messaged her about it and i saw that she went to the concert and it was amazing and mighty but all of that is happening out there but what is it you as a as a worshiper and a, uh, a young believer yourself and when i say young i mean young as an age <laughs> what what is it like what is it like Oh, South Africa is such a beautiful country and our young people are just so excited for God. Our young people are so energetic and they really, really want to serve God. And, you know, even in that concert in Bethel, I didn't get to go. I think it was in a different city or so. But, um, you know, it it is one, it is, I heard that it was really full. Like, it was so full, you couldn't get in. That's how full it was. So God is really doing something powerful, like something more than we could even imagine in South Africa with our young people. Uh, you know, I've been to, there, there's so many in our communities, uh, so many concerts and uh, young adult meetings and youth meetings that are taking place in South Africa and, and in our communities and where we see young people are so hungry for God and they're coming before God. I've been to a um, youth meeting, I think, where um, the presence of God was so strong as the leaders begin to uh, pray over the kids. They were, they were crying under the anointing. Uh, souls were being saved, you know, uh, people's lives are being changed. There's something so powerful that's happening in South Africa. And, uh, I, I, you know, to see that is such a blessing. To see God moving in the hearts of young people is such a blessing. It's so inspiring. And to see that God is, you know, changing hearts is is not just is not just moving in, in His presence is not just here for the moment, but it it that He is 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 changing hearts and is changing minds for the kingdom of God. So you see, it starts here at, at you, you know, and the Bible says, and I love the scripture in Jeremiah chapter one verse five that says, and I think everybody knows this one. Before I formed you in the womb, <laughs> I knew you. Um, before you were born, I set you apart. You know, being set apart. And God was speaking to Jeremiah. He was a young man at the time. And um, 
God was saying to Jeremiah, I set you apart, you know, go where I am calling you to go and, and speak where I am telling you to speak. So it's so important that when God is telling us to go somewhere, be somewhere, if it's in his will, that we should go. We shouldn't be afraid because God is able to equip you with every single thing that you need to speak his word or to minister in whatever giftings he has for you. And every person that comes to Christ, God is able to gift you with something, whether it's music or evangelism or, you know, uh, speaking the gospel of Jesus. God has called us. So even though we are young and vibrant and we are we are really as young young adults um, and young and youth in South Africa, I think it's more important also to share you know what God is doing to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ you know ultimately for all of us Jesus came and he died upon the cross so that we can have eternal life and um, yeah that's, that's all, what I can say about our young people they are they're truly something that is happening through our youth that God is doing something and yeah <laughs> yeah that's awesome awesome i'm so glad to hear that and and uh, and i really i really do see myself in south africa in the near future uh, so just keep that in prayer keep that in prayer um i, I and i i just wanted to touch on because just this morning my i was i was going through um the whatsapp statuses and i was watching people right and um there's there's this person i'm associated with in cuba and um she was ministering in cuba and then and and i'm seeing all of these young people on fire in cuba as well and it was like they, they had an event and it's well over 600 people there and uh, over 100 of them uh gave their lives to the lord and i am just um provoked to jealousy is the word i'm looking for um that that you know it's it's happening and these little fires and these little um campfires are happening all over the world and and, and god is raising up the next generation and, but you see my thing about this is he's raising up a generation for war because this is a, and i know i want to i don't want to scare people when i say war it is a battle it's a battle and he's he's looking for sons as sons of isiska he's looking for those as you said those ones who are willing to just go and to be sent and and we need to understand people it's not flesh we're talking we're not, not talking about the natural right we don't fight against flesh and blood right but we're fighting against these principalities and powers because the enemy wants to take out the next generation right he's done it countless he tried countless times in the bible to take out that first generation that young generation but we have to be the next generation to rise up and to go and to war and battle right the bible speaks about um our fingers and our hands are made for war and battle right and we have to understand that as a next generation we have to be we serve a god that is spirit therefore we must be spirit-led we have to understand that we must be spirit led. So, Krishan, just before we close, uh, is it possible for you to just give a, a prayer of encouragement, as well as those who are watching who probably were pondering on receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but they they haven't actually reached at that point. So, if you could just give a uh, lead these young souls to to Christ, and then give a little prayer of encouragement. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful that we could be here today, oh God, to share your word and to share what you want your people to know, my Father. I mean, thank you that you are working, oh God, in each and every life, oh God, that you have something planned and purposed, oh God, for each and every young person that is watching, my Father, and everyone that is watching. I pray for everyone that is going through something that is difficult right now, my God. I pray that they will have the strength through your spirit to come before you, God, to surrender their hearts to you, God, and to leave all of the hurting and the pain, God, to you, because you are the only one that can heal us, God. 
You are the only one that can, can change us, oh God. You're the only one that can save us, oh God. And Father, today we just pray for every person right now. And I pray that everyone that, that wants to accept you as a Lord and Savior, that, that Lord, you, oh God, will call them into your kingdom right now. And that, God, you will choose them, oh God, for a time such as this. To, do, to go how to God and to do great things for your kingdom, my Father, and to, to oh God, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations, oh God. And we just thank you for every everyone that is listening, oh God, that you will have your way right now, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will touch the lives of the people today in Jesus' name. Um, Amen. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's nothing sweeter than Jesus. Um, you know, this journey that we have, nothing that we could ever go through could ever compare to how much he loves us, how much he wants us to know him and to, to, uh, to draw closer to him. And so if you feel in your heart today that God is calling you, I just want you to pray this, this simple prayer and saying, um, Dear Lord Jesus, Will you forgive me of all my sins? Today, I just want to make you my Lord and Savior. I want to surrender my heart to you, my life to you, O God. And I pray that you will come in and live within me and that you would take my life and you would use me for your kingdom and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, guys. Guys, it was such a powerful time. My God, my God. Uh, the fire of God has been moving through this place and we thank him so much. We thank the sweet, sweet Holy Spirit for having his way and speaking and ministering even right now. chris Ann, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me today. Such a pleasure. Such, such a pleasure. And, and, and trust me, it wouldn't be, the, it wouldn't be your last. This is the first of many, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Definitely. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for joining this episode of the Burning Podcast. All right. Don't forget, we try our best to release new episodes every Friday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click the notification bell and be blessed. Okay. God bless you. Bye-bye.